Hello, it is Derek with the Hemet EdTech team, and we have some exciting news today. Breakout rooms, Q&A, and polling have just dropped. So you should start seeing that show up in your Google Meets in the next few days. And I have a uh, very fake meeting going on right now to demonstrate some of these tools. So you will find all of these options up here under this new menu bar. So um, I still have my, participation, my, my, my participants and my chat, but I also have something called activities now. So if I click on activities, you will see that I now have these three options, breakout rooms, polls, and Q&A. So for breakout rooms, I'm gonna click that option and here you go. I have all my participants in the call right here. I can decide how many breakout rooms I want. Um, maybe for this example, I'll just do three breakout rooms. I can shuffle them and kind of randomize it and put my, put my students just in, in kind of heterogeneous or random groups. I can clear all of them. And now everyone you can see is back in this main call area here. Or I can just simply drag and drop the individuals that I want. So maybe I want, you know, these are all different fake accounts, so I can drag these students into different breakout rooms as I see fit. Um, I had drag <laughs> this black and white picture is actually my teacher account, so I might want to stay on the main call and drag my students there. Um, and then, you know, if I wanted to join a particular group and maybe work um, in a small group session and, and provide some intervention, then I could just drag myself into any of those groups. So once I click open rooms here, it's going to put those students into breakout rooms. I can see right here that breakout rooms are in sessions. It is doing a little bit of thinking right now because I am running about seven different meets on my computer, so I'm really taxing the resources here. Um, but the students are in their breakout rooms right now. I can hop into any one of these, and let's say I'm gonna join breakout group two, and now here I am joining breakout two, and I'll see those two students in there in just a minute. So now I'm in this room with those two students. Again, I still have my breakout uh, menu over here. I can leave that room at any given time, join another room if I'd like, or I have the option up here in the right when it pops up again. I have the option to close all the rooms. So again, I'm running a lot of meetings at the same time, so this is going a little slow, but I'm gonna click this close rooms and end that breakout session. So let me go back here. So I'm still in under the activities pane now, and I'm gonna go down to this polls option. So poll is just sort of a, a quick question, something to gauge the temperature of your class, maybe a formative assessment, something like that. I clicked on polls, and now I'm gonna click start a poll. And let's just say my question is, what is your favorite color? Not necessarily the most instructional poll, but um, for illustrative purposes, it'll serve, it'll serve just fine. So um, let's just say red, blue, I can click this button to add another option, green or yellow. So I can save that poll and um, build out another one if I want. So maybe what is your favorite animal? And let's just give two options here for expediency stake. So I've got a dog or cat. I'm going to save that question. So I'm, I'm kind of building up these ready-made polls that I want to ask. And when I'm at the point of my lecture, when I want to actually deploy this poll, I'm just gonna click launch. And I can toggle this, you'll see, to show everyone the results. So if it's a poll that I want everyone to see the results, you know, sort of a graph of what everyone's responding to in the class, I can toggle that on to show the other students the results. Um, I can delete this question or I can launch it. So once it's launched, I'll get this little live indicator up here and the students are gonna be able to um, answer their question appropriately. And just in a sec, I'm gonna hop over to a student view to show you what this looks like. Okay, so now I'm over here in the student view, and this is one of my other accounts that is in the meeting. And you can see I've got this little green notification dot for this student under my actions. So just as the presenter, just as the teacher and the host had that actions menu, so do the students. So if I click that actions tab, now I'm gonna say, see I've got that little dot on polls. So there's a poll going on. If I click that, now I can see that my teacher has a live poll and I can respond with my favorite color here and then vote. So again, I've, I've only voted once, so this is illustrating the example I toggled on that students should be able to see the responses. So I can see that one student, which was myself, voted for green here. So students will access the poll um, just like the teacher through that activities menu. 
Okay, so I'm back here in the teacher view. You can see I saw that vote come in as well, so I can see one student has voted. I can end this poll if I would like and maybe launch my other one, or I can you know, just leave polls altogether. So I'm actually gonna end this poll and trash that one. I can create more polls, you get the drift. So I'm gonna now exit out of polls and show you the last sort of new feature under this activities tab, and that is Q&A. So under Q&A, this is basically turning on a Q&A option for students. So if I turn this on, um, I can see all questions that students ask. So this is more like a little bit more structured um, chat option. So let me show you, um, well, this, this actually shows you the student's view right here. I can, I can ask a question here and just say, uh, you, again, maybe, what is your favorite dinosaur? And that's just a simplified question. You know, a student might be saying, hey, where do I click to, you know, access that piece of curriculum? Or I didn't quite understand those directions. What do I do after I read the story? So they can pop in their questions here and it sort of keeps it like a forum for you. And you can uh, mark as hidden so only you can see it. So that means uh, maybe the student asks you the question. Maybe it's a private question. You don't want the rest of the class to see it. So you can mark it as hidden or you can mark it as answered by just giving it that check mark. Um, students can vote on questions, so they can click that little thumb to sort of say, hey, I have that question too, and I would like this answered as well. And maybe, you know, maybe if it was an error or a question that has um, already been resolved and you don't need it up in the Q&A anymore, you can delete that question. So um, up here is just how you would sort them, so you could just look for all of the ones that um, are unanswered that you need to get to. Um, again, by time, oldest or newest first, maybe you come over here and look at answered or all questions. Period. So these are just sort of the sorting mechanisms, um, and that's Q and A. It's just again more of a little more of a structured chat where students can actually pose questions that you can get to. You know, um, depending upon how active your chat is, or if you even have it um, enabled, those can fill up pretty quickly, and it can be difficult to uh, find the questions. So that's definitely something we'll be using in our trainings because that's a really good feature um, feature to have. So another one, this one, this feature isn't incredibly new, but we haven't trained on it yet. We haven't, we haven't done anything about this. Under the three ellipses down in the bottom right, we have another option called whiteboard. So if you've ever used Jamboard, what this is going to do is actually open up a jam. So this is going to, I can either choose from a, from a previous jam that I have, or I can start a new one. So I'm gonna click start a new whiteboard, and it's gonna create a jam, which is just a digital whiteboard. It's gonna say, hey, these people don't have access to it and you need to share it with them or turn the link sharing on, I'll say that's fine, I'll send it. And it's gonna open up a new window for me. So I'm sort of outside the meeting, the meeting's still going on, I could click back in it here, but Jam is a digital whiteboard space, so it's gonna present that to me, you know, I'm in the full screen view here. So um, this is just a Jam board for the students. So this is a way to sort of bring in a whiteboard element if you wanna have them be able to kind of brainstorm ideas. They've got the pen tools over here, they can choose, you know, highlighter pen, um, brush and things like that with the different colors add sticky notes, bring in images or text box. There's a lot they can do. A lot of teachers are doing some really cool stuff with jams. So those are now integrated into the meeting itself. So that's a pretty cool feature um, that came about and we haven't really had a chance to discuss it. We've already displayed host controls. Not a lot has changed over here. Um, they will be doing some more updates here, but for now, you can again, you can let everyone send chat messages or share their screen. I can turn both of those on or off. So, you know, maybe students, um, I want them to chat but not present, or maybe vice versa. I want to allow them to present and share their screen but not chat, or maybe I just want both of those off for now. Again, this quick access, remember, this will just make somebody knock. So when I have that turned off, then anybody in that meeting has to ask to join um, before, I'm, before they're able to be in there. So that's the host controls here. And then the last thing um, that is a really cool update with Google Enterprise is attendance tracking. So once I end this meeting, I'm gonna push end. Okay, so I have left the meeting. Now, obviously, if this were a real classroom, I would never leave students in a room by themselves, just like I wouldn't do that in, in a brick and mortar setting. So uh, make sure that you are the last person to leave, either just by asking your students to go or even manually removing them if you have any stragglers. And you can do that with that little minus button in the participant pane. But for the sake of this example, let's just say all my students left and then I left. So I've left this meeting, the meeting is over, and I am actually gonna come up to my email. So my email is where I will get this attendance list. 
Now, um, full disclosure, this email didn't come right away. I had to wait a few minutes, but you know, being patient, it'll, it'll come and it'll be in the format of meeting data from and then whatever your your uh, meeting's name was. So I had nicknamed mine sample meeting. This might just be a random string of characters. It depends on how you nickname your meetings. And then it'll just say on the date that the meeting was held. So um, notice that I've got questions and polls. So this was that Q&A as well as my poll results. So it's a lot more information than just my attendance. It's a really, um, again, a really cool sort of synopsis of what happened after the meeting. I'm gonna just click into all of these really quickly to show you. So coming into the questions document, Notice that that'll open up a Google spreadsheet and there was one question that was asked. So remember, this is different than polling. This is sort of that Q&A. Um, it's gonna say Derek Rao on a lot of these just because I was the only person in that meeting. I had just been using different accounts. But the person who submitted the question was Derek Rao and their question was, what is your favorite dinosaur? It shows you the timestamp of when that was submitted. Upvotes, so remember that was that little thumbs up if any um, other students had, had given it a thumbs up to say they also have that question. This indicates, did the moderator answer it or did they hide it? Remember, I had toggled both of those or if the moderator cleared it or if the submitter themselves. So maybe, you know, this student asked the question and then um, felt like it was answered during the presentation, so they deleted it themselves. So a little bit of data that's captured automatically for the questioning. And the same if I come into my polling results. So remember, I had actually had two polls. I only launched one of them, but I had asked, what was your favorite color? And there were some options. And then I had asked, what was your favorite animal? And there were some options. And again, only one person responded because that was the demonstration. Um, if I had a you know a big class, I would see all of their names here with their response to those questions. So really cool feature. Um, notice that both of these, I kind of get a live Q&A doc with one. And on this one, I have all of the results from the formative assessment without having to you know, jot that down or memorize it or anything like that. I can review those after the fact, which is really nice. And the last one, and maybe the most valuable, is the attendance tracker. So this looks like it's gonna open up in a Google document. You notice that it's blue. Um, it is a CSV file though. So CSV stands for comma separated value. These are typically opened in a spreadsheet, you know, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. So when I click on this, it'll give me a little preview, but I really wanna open this up in a spreadsheet. So I'm gonna come up here to open with, and go to Google Sheets. You could also download it if you prefer Microsoft Excel. So this is all of the attendance. So again, you'll see my name a lot of times and my son's and, and wife's names because I was using as many accounts as I had just to kind of demo those features. But I'll have the student's name, their email address, how long they were in the meeting, as well as their time in and their time out. So um, really, again, takes the burden off of me as the teacher to have to monitor this or log this um, you know, manually with, with a little piece of paper or so. So I've got a, a live attendance tracker that tells me how long they were in that meeting and there's nothing that I had to do to, get to receive that. Google automatically generated that. So all of that will come in that, that email. That email will be titled meeting data and then from your meeting's name. So again, another, another just really highly anticipated feature that hopefully is valuable um, as are the breakout rooms, Q&A and polling and, and the whiteboard features. So again, thank you all so much for your, for your grace and patience. I know that this has been a long slog and these are really anticipated features and we hope they're valuable as we sort of continue this mode of online learning. So again, thanks for your patience and grace and have a great one.